So I just want to take this moment to do a brief pausing point in Domain 10. We are about halfway through this domain and this social studies unit. So I want to briefly go over everything we have learned so far in this domain and just talk about and discuss everything that we've learned in all of the readings up until this point. Now, the first thing we learned that there was originally 13 colonies when we began to settle in this in this new world, in this new country. And those original 13 colonies were Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Rhode Island, New York, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, New Jersey, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. So we're going to go through these again, and I'm going to point them out on the map. And again, these are the original 13 colonies that we originally settled when we came across the Atlantic Ocean from Great Britain to this new world. So they are Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New York, Rhode Island is this little one right here, Connecticut, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Maryland, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia. So again, those are the original 13 colonies that we had settled when we came over to this new land. Shortly after we came over, we started experiencing problems with British rule. Now, when we came over, we were still being governed by the British Parliament, by the British government. So the Boston Tea Party happened. Why did it happen? The British were heavily taxing goods that they were sending over to the colonies, and it got really out of hand when they started heavily taxing tea. Tea was a staple in uh, these people's diets and in the their culture tea was very important so they drank a lot of it and British started heavily heavily taxing the tea that was coming over to the American colonies and they had passed a law that stated they could not get their tea anywhere else they had to get it from uh, Britain and they had to get it from the British so putting that heavy tax on the tea was really doing an incredible amount of damage to the American colonies and to their uh, environment there and to everything that was happening there. So why did it happen? The British were heavily taxing a lot of the things, especially the tea. Who did it? It was the group of patriots because as we talked about in um, the lessons, there was two distinct groups in the colonies. There were the patriots that did not want to be ruled by the British anymore. They wanted their own independence. And then there were the loyalists who were okay with the British rule and wanted to stay British uh, colonists and wanted to stay British citizens, and they did not want independence. So there was the Patriots who wanted independence and the Loyalists who wanted to stay loyal to Britain. So the Boston Tea Party happened and was led by the Patriots, specifically a group of Patriots called the Sons of Liberty. They decided to create their own group and call themselves Sons of Liberty because they were trying to liberate or free the American colonies from British rule. Where did this happen? The Boston Harbor, which is why it's called the Boston Tea Party, and a harbor is just a place where boats and ships can dock so that uh, they can rest overnight. So it took place in the Boston Harbor, and when did it happen? It happened in December of 1773. So that was the Boston Tea Party. After the Boston Tea Party, the British were not very happy with how the colonists were acting. And they were sending a whole bunch of spies over to the colonies. And Paul Revere's ride became a very important uh, thing that happened in our history. So what happened is the Sons of Liberty found out that British soldiers were planning on raiding the colonists' storehouse of weapons. So the British were sending over spies to uh, check out the colonists and check out everything that was happening in the colonies, and they found out that the colonists were storing a whole bunch of weapons secretly and trying to keep it a secret from Britain, and they found out. So the British were planning on raiding or breaking into all of these storehouses and stealing and getting all of these weapons so the colonists could not use them. So the Patriots, the Sons of Liberty found this out, and the Patriots needed a way to get a message to the militia, to the army in Concord, to warn them that the British were tr going to try this and to warn them that this was happening so they could try to prepare for it. So Paul Revere asked a friend to spy on the British and to try to figure out their plan, and they arranged a secret code to signal what that British plan was, and that secret code happened 
in the belfry. We, the belfry is just a tower where they keep the bells, and there are they decided that they were going to put lanterns in this belfry. And that secret code was there was going to be one lantern lit if they were if the British were going to come by land, two lanterns if by sea, and there's a famous phrase, one if by land, two if by sea. So we can see that there was two lanterns in there, so they knew that they were going to come by sea. And then Paul Revere rode throughout all of the towns until he got to Concord, screaming the phrase, yelling the famous phrase, phrase the British are coming, the Redcoats are coming. So these people could get ready for this invasion of the British militia. And because Paul Revere did this ride, the Minutemen were able to prepare for this invasion. Now, there was two sets of groups, two uh, groups of people in this famous shot heard round the world battle when the British came over. One was the Minutemen, and the Minutemen were American colonists, and they were shopkeepers and farmers. They were volunteers who wanted to volunteer for their their country and for their people. They were not trained to use these weapons. They were not trained together. They were not trained to fight, and they got this name Minutemen because they slept with muskets and gunpowder right by their beds so that they could be ready to fight at a minute's notice. And that's why they were able to be ready when Paul Revere came riding through saying the Redcoats are coming. Uh, they, they were always ready to jump into action. The Redcoats, on the other hand, were British soldiers who were trained to use their weapons in battle and they were trained together. So they had more of a plan and more of um, a way to fight and organize themselves together. And they got the name Redcoats because they had neat, clean uniforms that were styled around a staple of their red coats. So that's why they got the name Redcoats. So that's the difference between the Minutemen and the Redcoats. And that all happened right during Paul Revere's ride of the British are coming, the Redcoats are coming. And that's why they were able, the Minutemen were able to jump into action and try to fight against the Redcoats and keep their storehouse of weapons to protect themselves. Now, the Declaration of Independence came into play after that. It was written by Thomas Jefferson, and Thomas Jefferson took, um, took a little bit to write it, and it was finalized and signed on July 4th, 1776. And the reason this is important is because it declared the freedom from British rule. The American colonies uh, no longer wanted to be ruled and governed by British. They had no say in their rules, they had no say in their laws, and they wanted to be able to govern themselves and be an independent nation and completely separate themselves from the British people. They no longer wanted to be British citizens, they wanted to be American colonists, American citizens. And a huge important part of this Declaration of Independence was that it stated that all men are created equal and they had the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now when it says all men, it's not just saying boys. All men just states all human. It's short for human. So all humans are created equal. No one person is greater than another person. And we all have the right to have the life that we want, to have the liberties and the freedoms that we want, and to pursue whatever happiness means to us, whether it means a shop owner, a farmer, whatever that is, we have the right to try to get that happiness. So that's why that Declaration of Independence was so important. And along with the Declaration of Independence, we do have the legend of Betsy Ross. And I want to emphasize that it is a legend. So we don't know for sure if it is or is not true, but it is a legend that has been revolving quite for some time now. Um, so it's believed that Betsy Ross was a woman who created the first American flag after the Declaration of Independence was signed. And this is important because it was really the first symbol of American independence that we had after we decided to break away from British rule. And it had 13 stars and 13 stripes on it to symbolize the colonies that were, effect, that were in effect during that time. And the reason they used the colors red, white, and blue is because the British flag also has the colors red, white, and blue. So they wanted to symbolize that, hey, these are your colors. We were once part of you. We were once your citizens, but we are no longer part of you. We are our own people. These are our 13 colonies, and this is how we're representing them, and we are an independent nation now. We do not associate with you anymore. So that flag was really the first symbol of independence that we had, and symbols of independence really start to come into play and start to be a very important part 
because it's uh, this independence is going to lead to a lot of conflicts, a lot of fights, a lot of wars, and symbols of independence is what really kept the morale going and kept the people wanting to keep trying to fight and gain for their freedoms and their rights. So having that very first symbol of independence was a really big deal. So that's everything that we've learned up until now. We are going to start getting into some other things for uh, some other stuff later in our units. So take some time now, go through this again, if you have any other questions about it, go through some of the other lessons if you're still uncertain on any of the other details. Once you're done with this and once you're done reviewing anything you need to, return to Seesaw and complete the activities that go along with this pausing point to review all of the lessons we've had so far.